I know I know this is giving Philomena Kunk right now. Um, may or may not have been intentional. Brushing over that. <laughs> On this week's episode, we are traveling to Belasa in the Core World, where we will discuss Super Hyper Roots, Obi-Wan Kenobi, again, and side note, by the way, please take action against this horrendous ban on the internet that Congress is trying to push for, because you can do something about it. One of the things that you can do is by calling or emailing your representatives, and the way that you can figure that out is going to the House or the Senate website and searching for your representative by zip code. Also, while you are doing that, um, be sure to voice your support in banning military-grade assault rifles nationwide, because this is the 67th mass shooting. I am referring to the shooting in Nashville, Tennessee, um, which happened yesterday in my time, because this episode was recorded on the 28th of March, 2023. We gotta do better as a country, but we can't do better unless we physically do something about it, right? Anyways, on with the show. Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Lady Kira's Galactic Adventure, where we traverse the universe in our Corellian Gorbeck cruiser, The Vindicator. <laughs> I am, of course, your host on this excursion, Admiral Kira Vondare of the Alliance to Restore the Republic. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? Anyways. Uh, this time, we are continuing our exploration of the interior as we travel to the planet Belasa. If you have no questions, comments, or concerns, then make sure to remember to educate your representatives on the importance of TikTok and how its dangers are less than or equal to those of American platforms. Hi, Facebook. Selling all of our data to Cambridge Analytica. Anyways, to put Tosh Station and Power Converters on your to-do list for the week. And to drink lots and lots of blue milk so you go big and strong like a bantha. <laughs> this week on Lady Kira's Galactic Adventure. That green dot on my face, by the way, is... It's it's a heart, but um, it's not really showing up on the camera. I'll see if I can make it pop in my color grading, but I doubt I will. So, uh want to let you know due to lack of motivation or lack of time i have right now and most certainly will have in in the future months uh in my errors era will only be in episodes every other week and on my patreon they will be posted every other week on tuesday mornings at about six o'clock if you have been around the metaphorical block before though you know that we first start out here with the generally undescriptive planetary disney canon and then move on to the legend stuff if it's relevant from there so let's get right into this, right? In canon, Belasa is an astronomical object located at M11 in the Core Worlds. Astronomical object is Star Wars slang for a planet where nothing notable canon-wise happened on or about or near, by the way. <laughs> Belasa is located along the Hydean Way, which is a super hyper route we've covered a few times, but we're going to cover it one more time because it's been a while. The Hydean Way is classified as a super hyper route because not only does it run from the core to the outer rim, but the physical space it runs along is super stable, that, therefore it is super, super used. It's super, super populated, right? Sometimes it's easy to forget just how complex space travel is when you get wrapped up in like the Skywalker of it all. Um, let's move past Skywalker anyways. Um, but uh, <laughs> space is matter. We know this, right? And it's matter is always moving, meaning that one location in space could be moving more than another especially if it's near um astronomical objects like planets like sun like stars and suns and moons asteroid fields nebulas um so certain parts of space are just going to be less dangerous because they're not as close to those bigger planetary bodies right making them safer for space travel and for light speed travel right the hydean way starts in bonadon in the core and ends by, huh, have fun pronouncing this one. I'm gonna put it up on the screen, ready? Immunosol, I think is how you're supposed to say it. Um, it looks like word vomit, but that's in the outer rim. <laughs> and I was gonna say something and I forgot. So believe it or not, uh, that's all we have on can in canon on Belasa. So if you give me a really quick favor and put on those legends lenses underneath your seats so we can learn a bit more about this place. I'm letting you all know that um, there is no information on the Velasa system besides its location, M11. We've already talked about this, so there's not gonna, there's no system time today. 
I know, you're all so sad about that. <laughs> Velasa itself is a terrestrial planet covered in mountains and plains with lakes dotting the surface of it. The surface of the planet is also covered in trees, one variety being the Pinir tree, which is known to be massively tall, straight trunk trees native to the mountainscapes there. Velasa's domesticated animals like the Duna, which I'm guessing are like horses or cattle because we don't really have a, a generalized description of them or what they look like. And other creatures like the ruby-throated cat, pale-faced, ruby-throated, and bodied, sometimes, uh, avians that f flew because avians fly. <laughs> Dude, I need more sleep. There are two major cities here in Belasa. The first is its capital, Usa. The city itself is a series of circular districts built around seven lakes with wide roads around them. Unlike many cities in Star Wars, the buildings were low to the ground, and the city itself was immersed in greenery. Uh, if you have ever seen what Coruscant looks like, and I'm guessing if you're a modern Star Wars fan, you've seen what Coruscant looks like, you'd also know that there's one rock and one tree on Coruscant which are native to the planet, and they take very good care of them. Uh, we saw the tree in... Uh, the Satine gets framed for a murder arc in the Clone Wars. <laughs> that was a whirlwind. And um, the rock we saw in a couple of episodes back of Mandalorian. Pretty cool. Uh, the other city on the planet, Arno, which is tinkling my Assassin's Creed brain. Uh, but we, <laughs> we know nothing about this city. Literally nothing at all. Uh, and with that, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals, it's time for everyone's favorite segment. Dudes and Dudettes, it's history time. If my voice, like, if my voice is a little scratchy right now, that's because I was... <laughs> practicing some music for patreon and belting some taylor swift songs so uh ignore that okay anyways oh no we're back to this again <laughs> uh what the okay so the earliest history we have on balasa dates back to ye old clone wars period i know which isn't very far back so let's just be grateful we have anything at all okay during those dastardly clone wars <laughs> which is what I'm referring to it as forever now, uh, the Velasan people actually decided to fight alongside the clone army. However, that's all we really know about Velasan activity during the war, which is kind of anticlimactic, but you know what? You do you, boo. If they're fighting alongside the clones, there must be some confirmed activity, like, like a battle of some kind in the system, but I found no reference to one, so we're just going to assume there is, but we shouldn't assume, because when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. We know, we know how this goes. <laughs> I also made that joke last week. Don't question it, okay? Um, but where when was I? Oh, yeah. When the Empire rose to power. Of course, it's always the Empire, right? Uh, every time I lose my train of thought, we come back to Empire. But when the Empire did rise to power, the Empire itself deposed the local governor of Belasa and established its own military garrison there. The local legislature remained probably to be like a figurehead to make it seem to the people like things were actually getting done in favor of them. Um, but imperial leaders gained control of the planet and ruled it with an iron fist, basically. But that's what the Empire does, so is that really a shock? No, it's not a shock. I don't know why I asked that question. Um, in the legend story of Obi-Wan Kenobi, he came here to Velasa as he was hiding from imperial eyes, bouncing around the- bebopping around the galaxy, right? And Boba Fett himself was sent to hunt him down. In the Legends, Boba does team up with Vader a lot earlier on than we get to see in the series, mostly because Boba didn't really speak until he got on his own show, but let's not talk about it. <sighs> deep breaths, deep breaths. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Interestingly, um, Belasa was known for one major thing. Cloth. Which begs the question, how is cloth made in Star Wars? Like, I mean, obviously, I know how it's made. It's woven, or it's woven or it's knit or, yeah. But, like, at the same time, it's like, do they have the same kind of fast fashion problems that we have here on Earth? Especially since they have a much bigger intergalactic population, right? They're not just clothing a planet. They're clothing 
dozens of planets in a system sometimes, right? Or if maybe their goods are being shipped to the Outer Rim. Like, question. This, these are the, these are the Star Wars questions that totally need answering. Not, you know, did Ahsoka and Ezra mess up the freaking timeline by going into the world between worlds? Yeah, totally. Hey, Filoni, you want to deal with this? <laughs> and actually, on that note, on the, on the note of space Jesus cowboy man Dave Filoni, <laughs> we're done. God, if he ever, ever watches this show, I'm dead. Like, actually done for. Do people know that, like, people actually praise him? <laughs> like, is that, that's hilarious. He is the force itself. <laughs> the force awakens from its nap and it's Dave Filoni. Holy shit, I need to stop. And that is everything I have for you on Belasa in Canon and Legends. I hope you enjoyed your journey this week and your stay so far aboard the Vindicator. If you have any questions or concerns about your stay, please feel free to bring it up with one of our personnel on board, which is literally just me, via a private message <laughs> or a DM. <laughs> Perhaps on our TikTok accounts at uh, Shadow Collective Rules, which is going to be popping up over here, or at Unidentified Robot. Or maybe our Instagram at Lady Kira, although I'm not sure if we should actually use that because why would I want to support Meta in their, you know, witch hunt against TikTok? Or maybe, or maybe, or maybe, or maybe <laughs> uh, you should check out our new Twitter, <laughs> however long that's going to freaking last, at uh, twitter.com slash lady underscore underscore Kira. No apostrophes. Or perhaps the review of our show on Apple Podcasts. You know, if you leave, a, if you don't listen on Apple Podcasts and you just go to whatever platform you do listen on, give me some five stars. You can go onto another social media site and post your review if you want to leave one there. And I will read it on the air if you do that, by the way. Or just leave one in general. Um, and since this is ye olde YouTube -y, um, <laughs> use that jar jar binks style tongue on un unroll that thing and you know while you're hit that big red button down there with it i bet you could i bet you can't i freaking bet you can't and if you do though you'll be automatically subscribed to this channel and if you hit that weird bell notification next to it that means you'll be notified of every single time i upload a new video unless i get blacklisted from youtube but i don't know why i would um i make star wars videos why okay Okay, if you want more of me, <laughs> uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash productions, and for only five bucks a month, you can have access to tons of additional content in our exclusive Discord community. Some of that additional content, let me give you some examples of that, it's going to be every single script I've ever written for this show, including, um... A running bibliography, but I wasn't doing it for some of the earlier episodes, so I do have to go back and edit those, and that's going to take a while. I'm one person. If I ever take a break for a few weeks, that's what I'll be doing. Um, another example is the In My Errors Era series of my era era. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that we started last week. Uh, those videos will be posted. They will be videos, by the way. Um, the last one was 45 minutes long. That was. Ugh, ugh, I filmed it three times. Those will be posted on Tuesdays at around 6 o'clock on the Patreon if you are a patron. And you will also get early access to the audio and video versions of this show, usually one to two days early. Usually two days. Because I'm efficient like that, bruh. Next time... Oh yeah, all of those usernames and the platforms that I just listed will be listed in the show notes. This is the longest outro I've ever done. Anyways, next time we're going to Corellia and whatever core worlds I can cover in an hour or less. But Corellia might warrant a longer episode just because it is a major story planet. It's also canonically due to the lore of the show where I am from. So we're going home, baby. Until next time, my friends, companions, and droids, may the force be with you all. Also, Taylor Swift next week. Be on the lookout. <laughs>